kind of kind of off on the, on the subject this morning. So, so this afternoon, I, the title of my message is "Where Are You?" And I wish there was more people here this afternoon to hear about, about "Where Are You?" Because I, this this is a is a story from the in the book of Genesis. Now I'm gonna, I'm going to read the Genesis two. two uh, chapter uh, uh, verses 15 through 17. Then in chapter 3, uh, I'll be uh, in, going from, from verse 1. But Genesis 2, 15 and 17 says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. Now, I, there, there's some, some things in here, and I, I want to talk about the temptation and fall of man. And, and, and I've, I've had people say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, man, man wasn't tempted. It, it was evil. The, the woman, she's the root of all evil. But no, no. <laughs> She was she was here as a helpmate for us, but but uh, Adam's when when Adam uh, heard her say, "Hey, this this, this is good," he, he he didn't have to to fall to that temptation. He he just said, "Okay, hold it, hold it. We need to let us and and obey what God said." But but uh, when when Eve was told Satan that that, uh, that you can't eat that fruit, he said, "I." Nah, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. God knows that whenever you, you eat of that fruit, you're going to be as, is as God. You're going to be as good as Him, no good and evil. You're going to know everything. So she, she kind of fell into that, and Adam fall, fell into it also. Man, Adam made it back in the Garden of Eden. I mean, that, that, I, I can't imagine having something made like, like Adam and Eve did. I, no trouble, no worries. Nothing didn't have to work. Wouldn't that be great? I mean, we we could we could fish on there and do whatever. But but it, it, when when God put us in that garden, we I, we, we were great. But I mean, today, uh, I'm, unlike Adam and Eve in, in the beginning, people are trying to do things without talking to God first. Now that that's what gets us in trouble. We don't talk to God about. It about what we what we intend to do or what we want to do. And I, I remember I remember my wife telling me one time uh, before I was he became the pastor of, over in Dublin, she said, you know what I see you doing? I said, what? She said, you would have been a pastor of a small church. I said, no way. Hey, no way. I will not. Well it wasn't that long, so I was. <laughs> and when God says yes, you can't say it, nah, not me. Because it don't work that way. God, God don't listen to you that much. I mean, he, he says, I said, and it's like my dad. When, when my dad said, I said you will, you didn't say, no, sir, I don't want to do that. Because my dad, you'd probably wind up over in a corner somewhere upside down or something. But, that's, but, but God, maybe God needs to treat us that way. I don't know. Maybe we need to be slapped down a little bit. But now, now in, in chapter 3, verse 1, I want to read verse 1 through 6 right now. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but in the fruit, but of the fruit of the tree which in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the days ye thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her, her husband with her, and he did eat. You know, there's kind of a, there's, there's kind of a play on words here, isn't it? The, the words for crafty and and naked are, are, are pretty similar. Uh, and, and, but biblically speaking, nakedness could be defined as being oblivious to evil. Uh, we, we sometimes uh, turn our eyes away from, from the things of the world and, and we don't pay any, any attention to, 
to the evil things of this world. But I want to tell you, if you listen to the news, if you read the paper, or if you just listen to people talking today, you know this world is full of evil. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's uh, and you know what that it makes me think? That makes me think that God is really, really close to, to calling all of his people home. Yes. And that's going to be a glorious trip for those of us who know Jesus Christ as your Savior. For those of us who don't know uh, Jesus Christ, it's not going to be so pleasant, is it? So, uh, the, 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 the words, like I said, are, are pretty similar. There's three things here that, that uh, we need to see clearly. And, and I, Now let's go down to verses 7 and 8. The testimony of faith. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig, sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the, in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Now, actually, do you think, do you think that, it was, that it was possible for, for them to hide from God? No. Well, I mean, we might try, and I've tried, like I told you earlier this morning, I've run from God for 20 years or more trying to hide from Him. You, you can't hide. You, you can run, but you can't hide. I mean, that's, that's something that you're going to have to realize in this life. Now, now, now look what verses 16 and 19 through 19 says. That's, I'm talking about this, this is the torment of the flesh. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy, th thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. The thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the, the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face and shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and to dust thou shalt return. So once again, we, we see here that, that I had told you a while ago about, about Eve seeing that this fruit was, was pretty, and it, it probably would taste good, and and she was lied to and, and more or less coerced into, into taking and eating of this fruit uh, of what God said. Now, there's a lot of times in my life when, when I've, wanted, I've been wanting to do something. And there's been a lot of times in my life that I've wanted something. And without talking to God, I go out and get it. And it doesn't turn out that good. I'm telling you. It doesn't work that way with God. When God wants you to have something, He's going to make sure that you know that, that that's what He wants you to have. Now, I, there's another thing that I want, I want to talk to you about in verse 23 and 24, and, and this is a truth that is that is very, very fine. This truth is fine. In 23, Therefore, therefore the Lord God sent him from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword, which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So we we know that now Adam had it made, Eve had it made, but in their desire to become as gods and to know good and evil, and to do, and to just basically disregard what God said. They, uh, they, the consequences of what they did caused them to be banished. It caused them to have to work and, and be in pain. And, and as I said, it's, it's very painful for a woman to, to give birth to a child. And I, I, know, that, uh, I know that it has to be uh, pretty hard. I, I've never been there. I don't want to be there. But, but I do know that, that it's, uh, it's very painful. So... Uh, we, we need to, to realize that when God said something, He doesn't say it just to be talking. Now, I, I know that uh, sometimes I talk just to hear myself, but I, and, uh, I'm not as bad as some people talk to themselves, but you know, I, I, I talk out loud like that, but, but I <laughs> and my wife smiling. <laughs> but uh, but uh, God doesn't say something just because He wants to say it. 
There's, I think there's a purpose and a reason that God tells us to do things. <laughs> now, I'm, I'm going to go back to verse 9 in, in, in Genesis chapter 3, where the, where the word says, And the Lord God called unto, unto Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Now, the character, the character of God is, is when he says, Where are you? Uh, I almost want you to ask the question, didn't God know where Adam and Eve were? Sure, he knew where they were. He knew exactly where they are. They were and knew exactly what they were doing. So he didn't need to call out actually and say, where are you? He knew. But I think that what he wanted to do is, is he wanted to see what kind of answer he would get. So we need to, we need to be uh, uh, careful in our lives when God uh, is, informs us to do something. We need to really be careful to do what he said. That, that we're supposed to do. Now, if, <laughs> then, then the, the verse, in verse uh, eight, three and eight. Uh, then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Well, we can fool ourselves all we want to, and we can try to hide from God, but there is not one place in this world that we could ever go to hide from God. Because God knows all. He know, He sees all and He knows all. So uh, verse, verse nine, or 8 and 9 refer to, to God as the Lord God. And this is God in all of His, uh, his attributes and in, in His character. It's God. It is pure God. So we know that God is both uh, omniscient and He's omnipresent. So Yes, he knew exactly where uh, they were because when he called them, he had the knowledge of exactly where they were uh, and was with them when he called them. He was there in the garden. He was with them. Even though they, they, they thought they were hid, God knew where they were. He saw them. So, I mean, this, this, is, this is something that we really, really, I, I can't emphasize too much. We cannot hide. God, we can't go out here and, and do something without God knowing. He knows our thoughts before we even, even have it. God really wasn't searching for Adam because he already knew where he was. Do you think God is searching for us? He already knows where we are. And that's what we need to realize in our lives today what is that God knows where we are. We know where, He knows where we are physically. He knows where we are spiritually. So spiritually is, is something that I, that I really like to talk to, to, to young people about. I like to talk to, to unsaved people about is, is that being spiritually in, uh, in, involved with God is the only way that you can, that, that, that you can go and have any, uh, any, any happiness in this life. God also knew what Adam had done and those same attributes that allowed God to know where Adam was also allowed him the future result of, God, of Adam's actions. He knows what we're going to do even before we do. He absolutely knows. So uh, God could see and, 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 and know the future effect. So God could see and know the future price Adam's actions would cost. He knew that when Adam sinned and done this, he knew that he would banish Adam from this garden of Eden. And I've had, I've had people ask me, well, why did God do that? Why, why did God even make us if, if he was going to send us into hell if we didn't obey him? And I said, well, I, need to, I need to clarify something. God never sends anybody to hell. We send ourselves. We send ourselves because we disobey God and, and, and we don't do what we're supposed to do. We don't accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. I... I I've asked myself, I don't know how many times, could I give up one of my children and, and put them to death for the rest of the world? It'd be hard, wouldn't it? It really would be hard. Could I do it? I don't know. And I hope to God that I never come to that conclusion, to, to that situation where, where I have to make a decision like it. Jesus Christ died for us. So, so God asked us the same question he has Adam. Where are you? He's, he's asking every one of us, where are you? God's watching your every moment of every day. And, and I, 
and I know that without, without a doubt. I know for a fact that he's watching us. He knows us. He knows where we are. He knows what our thoughts are. And he knows what we are going to do when we get up and leave this building. So it's kind of scary at times. God is seeing us every moment of every day. He's interacting in our life in every moment of every day. We may not know it. We may not realize it. But the Holy Spirit is here. He's, he's interacting in our lives. Wanting us, to, wanting us to do certain things. God knows there's choices that we make even before we make them. God knows the motivation of the choices even if we try to deceive ourselves. And we, we I lie to myself sometimes. It's not good. Yeah, I'm going to do this because of it. Well, no. I'm doing it because of selfish, selfishness a lot of times. But God wants us to, to do what He desires for our life. What were we put here for? We were, we were put here to, to worship and, and, and interact with God and have conversations with God. God knows the outcome of our, our, of our choices. He also knows the future impact of your choices. And the question that I can ask a lot of people in, in, this, in this world. So when you blow off church or Sunday school, he knows where you are. He doesn't have to ask you. And, and, and he knows why you are where you are and what your motivation is. I, I mean, it's, it, it makes me, me think about some of the things that, that uh, is going on in the world today. Well, there's a camera on you at every moment, everywhere you go. And you, you, you might ought to look around. Because where you drive, where you go in, 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 in town sometimes, you're being watched. It may be, it may be from, uh, from uh, something here in the world that's this, this filming you. But God, God doesn't need to film you because, I mean, he's got, he's got a good mind. He remembers. He knows. So, uh, so, so you need to ask yourself the question, where, where are you when you should have been in God's house? I mean, I can I've been asked that question a lot of times. So, where are you? And, and, and again, this is a condition of man. Why did God ask the question if he already knew the answer? What he's doing, he's, he's stirring conviction in our hearts. He was stirring the conviction in Adam's heart. Adam, where are you? Adam said, oh, man, I messed up big time. He knew. He knew that he... That he was, that he was doing wrong. We do wrong all the time, but we do it anyway, don't we? I do. Sometimes. The Bible says they were hidden. Well, that's that's in reality that's an impossibility. You can't hide it. Anymore. So the issue is not that they were hidden. The issue is that they were not where they were supposed to be. That's where a lot of people are today. Not where they're supposed to be. You can't hide from God. So God was in the habit of fellowship with men. And that's, what, that's why He made us. That's why we were created to have fellowship with God. What, what, where are we supposed to be in a place of fellowship with? Are we where we need to be? Are we fellowshipping with God in, in, a, in a way that, that you can say, man, I'm proud of that. Would God say that? Would God say that? So the fact that the Bible said God walked in the garden leads us to, to, to the belief that God visited the garden in a physical form. I think maybe He did. The reason that they were not where they were supposed to be is because that they were not in the condition they were supposed to be in. They were in a good condition at one time, spiritually, but then they turned away. They obeyed God. But then, through disobedience, they weren't where they were supposed to be. Sin affects our desire to fellowship with God. And that's, that's a proven fact. We People living in sin don't want to talk about God. They don't want to fellowship with God. And I, I bet you there's everybody in, in, in this room that has had somebody tell you, I don't want to hear it. I started to, tell, to talk to a man one time, and, and I don't remember where it was, about God. And he said, hold it. You can stop right where you are because I don't want to hear about God. 
And I said, well, I'm not going to not tell you because God loves you and I love you. And people say, how could you love me you don't know me? Because you are a child of God and I love what God has created. So we, we really need to, to, be, to be careful. So sin affects your desire. So, so it, 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 the word says in 1 Samuel 15 and 22, and Samuel, Samuel said, said, Hath the Lord God as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice, as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to, better, uh, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. So it's so better to obey God in the beginning than rather to ask his forgiveness later. Now I'm gonna tell you I heard that when I was growing up. You 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 better not do something that you know you're not supposed to with my dad because in the end you're gonna say, Lord, <laughs> Dad, would you forgive me? And he says, just bring me that double strap, razor strap in the head. And I and I'll teach you that you will obey. And my dad was a sticker for obedience. And sometimes, in my mind, he was, he was a little overbearing. He was a little rough. But uh, I, I, I thank God that, that I had a dad that was wanting, us, wanting all of us to live right. Even though sometimes the, the, the punishment in my mind was a little severe. And we think that's the same way with God today, don't we? Punishment for disobeying God is pretty severe. But not, my dad's punishment wasn't near as severe as disobeying God. Because if, I, if we disobey God and don't ever fellowship with God and don't accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and we go off into eternity, we live for, we're, we're going to live eternity. We will live in eternity. But it's our choice whether we go up or we go down. Living in a lake of fire, I don't want to have any more of it. I've had all I want. So, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a good thing to know that, that God loves us. But it's better to be where God wants us to be now and ask forgiveness, as I said. Today, every time we shun an opportunity to fellowship with God, we do the same thing Adam did. And you might say, hey, you think I'm doing the same thing? Well, if you're not doing what God wants you to do, what He wants you to do, but I'm sure you disobey God. We turn from God. We disobey God. We rebel against God. And at least Adam was sorry for what he was, that he was not where he should have been. And I'm going to tell you what today, most people in this world that's not where they are to be with God. They don't, they're not sorry that they miss church or Sunday school, prayer meeting, or anything else. They are not sorry at all that they disobey God because they really don't understand the, the consequences. They don't understand. They're not sorry that they, that they, that they, they don't do uh, the, the opportunities and time to fellowship with God. And our inactivity and, and, and lack of regret says a great deal about our condition. If we don't witness the people, the lost, or even tell a fellow, a fellow Christian uh, that, that you love them, if you don't, if you don't do it. We're, we're missing a blessing. I'm, I'm telling you, we're missing a blessing. Adam wasn't where he was supposed to be because he was not in the condition that he was supposed to be in. We're not where we're supposed to be because we're not in the condition we're supposed to be in. And, I, and folks, I, 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 you see this finger? I'm, I'm pointing to me. I'm pointing to me. I can't, I can't tell you where you that you're not in condition that you're supposed to be because I don't know. Only you have gotten it. So what what really is is kind of funny though is is that man today still tries to run from God. They try to run away from him, to hide from him. There's no hiding. So they're 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 doing that by staying away from church, refusing to sit under the preaching of God's word, never seeking God never reading and studying the Bible, never praying, they ignore God, neglecting God, denying there's such a thing as sin, guilt, or conscience. Many, many people today are doing that very same thing. 
So when the doors of the church are open, the question is, where are you? And people are going to look at you and say, I don't know. Let's say it anyway. Say it anyway. When your Bible sits closed on the table, gather dust. Ooh, man, that hurts, don't it? Where are you? Yeah. When seats go on field at prayer meeting, where are you? When seats are empty for prayer Sunday morning and for services, where are you? I mean, my goodness. We need to consider uh, the, the thing that God wants to do. We need to evaluate our life. Where you are and where you aren't always says volumes about your spiritual condition. It says a whole lot about you. So this is important because of where you are. It, the, this is the commandment of God. God expects you to be where He is. The place in the garden was their regular meeting spot. God expected Adam and Eve to be at their place of meeting, and He expects us to be at our place. We really, he really does. Where are you when God expects to meet you? He expects to meet you in a, in a, in a house where people gather to worship God. This building doesn't make a church. What makes a church? The people do. I've had, I, I have had some great, great church meetings out in the open under a tent revival. I don't, I, probably all of y'all know what a tent revival is. But, <coughs> but up in Oklahoma, I used to go to tent revivals all the time. Man, you talk about some great times up there. Yeah, if you had never been in a, in a tent revival in, in August when the sun beating down on you, and, and I mean you're sitting there and, and, and you lose about 15 pounds during that, that hour and a half or whatever, and, but the Spirit of God is there. The Spirit of God is there. The consequences to man for not being where you are tell, it tells us that, that the result uh, of man bearing where you be, man's being where he should not have been, not bearing where he should have been. Well, the result was Adam lost his comfort zone, didn't he? Eve lost her comfort zone. So God drove him out. They lost tremendous blessing by being where they should not have been, when they should have been where they were supposed to be. So in Genesis 3 and 24, it said, after he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden, Cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way of the tree of life. So what happened? In their, they, they lost a tremendous opportunity to fellowship with God. But in, in return, Adam had a life and he got death. Adam had pleasure and he got pain. Adam had abundance and got toil. Adam had fellowship and got alienation. Adam had peace and got conflict. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I don't like conflict. I like things to be really quiet and, and normal. But I mean, it's been, it's been a long, long time in my life since it's been, things have been quiet and peaceful. It's, there's always something uh, in an uproar, and not, not particularly just in my house, but, but Things that I know about, things that that I that I care about. Our children. That's one of the one of the biggest things in my life. I think sometimes that's that uh, keeps conflict on. I, I I used to say when I was when I had little children. I used to say, man, I wish they would hurt grow up because there's such a problem now. <laughs> <laughs> They're ten, ten times as more of a problem now grown as they were when they were small. So today, I'm going to close by saying, where are you? And the challenge to man that God put out is, are you where God wants you to be spiritually, physically? Are you where God wants you to be when God wants you to be there? Are you doing what God wants you to, to be doing when you are where God wants you to be? Some good questions. So I, as I said at the beginning of the service, I wish that uh, the 
my house could be full where they where they could have heard what I had to say, what God had put in my heart. So that's a, it, it's, it's something that we really, really need to think about. And you and, and, and people say, well, I, I, I don't know what to do. Have you tried talking to God? And that's something we can tell people. When they say, well, I don't know what to do. Pray. Yes. Prayer meets, meet, means a lot. Prayer will get you places that you never thought you could get. It will get you things in your life that you never thought you could get. I, I don't mean to go out here and, and pray for $400 million like Brother Lewis said this morning. Well, I, I mean, I know what to do with it, but most people <laughs> No, <laughs> uh, but anyway, if, if I had that much money, I'd probably give it all away. I probably would. My wife would help me too. <laughs> I mean, you. <laughs> but we, but we, we could, we could use that money for the glory and, and honor of God. And, and that's, I believe, that's in my heart. I believe that's what I'm doing. There, I know that there's churches in need. I know that there's people in need, and that would be, I think, would be my ambition. If I if I had money, like some people in this world do, I would uh, I wouldn't have it all. I would be giving it away. God bless you, folks. Thank you for having me here.